My first meeting was with Sarah Kottner, founder and CEO of Montessori for All. The biggest things with meeting with her were that due to budget restrictions, she was kind of forced into managing others on a day-to-day -day basis when originally she had planned for somebody else to fulfill that role. She takes much more fulfillment from building and developing and growing ideas and working kind of individually and then bringing it to the table where she's very type A and, and her leadership style and sometimes can be seen as a little too forward, a little too blunt, and especially with instructors who are very in touch with their emotions, they, they kind of read too much into it and there's direct conflict where, you know, as she was in the business world, as a male, I, I don't think some of her behaviors or feedback would be taken har harshly, but because she's in the education system and she is female, it gets, you know, taken a different way. As you'll see in the next slide, some of the biggest things that she had that worked for her were just regularly scheduled meetings where you can have two-way communication that was very fact-based and very concrete in terms of, yeah, development was really helpful for her. My second interview was with Matt Bradford, who does consultant work in education. The biggest takeaways from meeting with him were that he went to work for a friend of his that started an organiza organization, was the founder and CEO, was very charismatic and they had a good relationship going in. And Matt was promised certain freedom and certain responsibilities that just weren't lived up to. And, you know, it created a lot of resentment and created strain in his relationship with his friend. And it ultimately, it led to burnout and then turnover. So biggest things, he wishes he would have communicated more effectively, got more things in writing, had more regularly scheduled meetings where he could bring up his issues. There just wasn't a sense that the friend of his could take feedback constructively. And lastly, I met with Ryan Seward, who used to be a financial analyst at a company that has pawn shops and does payday loans. The biggest takeaways that I had from our conversation was how not to lead. He was freshly out of school, working his first you know, adult job, and he, he was working for a woman that knew his role inside and out and had been promoted from it. And he just felt like there was a culture where you were afraid to ask questions, you were afraid of failure or embarrassment. It really stunted his growth. And while he did perform well and he worked really hard, there was always that sense of fear and sense of resentment. And eventually it led to his turnover.